Coming now to you, uh, Dr. Eddie Eric, uh, we want to continue to understand uh, in greater uh, details of the uh, place of geopolitics and how uh, the African continent can bring in the, uh, its own narratives to make uh, a difference. Now, in the preamble, we underlined the areas where this uh, uh, geopolitical influence is being felt, uh, and one of the such was uh, resource exploitation. So my question that I am directing to you at this particular moment, Dr. Eddy, is how those geopolitical competition between major uh, global powers impact resource exploitation in Africa. Uh, thank you, Clarice, and uh, thank you to my uh, co-panelists. Uh, they kind of uh, established some um, foundations in and here. The uh, first thing I want to do uh, before uh, diving into the question, you know, uh, per se, is to uh, make, uh, and I'm sure we all, all of us, you know, do understand that when we talk about, you know, geopolitics, it is not uh, necessarily to the detriment of the African continent because you know all of the nations of the world, all of the societies you know do have the geopolitics. Uh, Professor uh, Nubong, you know, were attempted you know were earlier to give us uh, some sort of a, an understanding. But when we talk about geopolitics, uh, Clarice, what I want our viewers and watchers you know what to take away from uh, you know uh, at the beginning is that you know what we are looking at uh, the uh, intersection between uh, geography and politics decision making distribution and sharing of uh, resources that you know what we have and to what extent therefore the geography and then when we talk about geography we are talking about human geography we're talking about physical geography we're talking about the sea we're talking about the rivers we're talking about uh, the uh, lanes that we have how big they are how small they are how uh, fertile those lanes are for cultivation, what kind of products uh, can be grown in, in there, what kind of industries can be developed. You talked about the natural resources that um, uh, the continent, you know, what does have, and matter of fact, you know, what they, uh, I mean, it is known that the African continent is uh, the richest when it comes to uh, uh, natural resources. To what extent those things, you know, were determined? When we also look at the human geography in and here, we are looking at populations, we are looking at cultures, we are looking at uh, uh, history, we are looking at uh, the uh, size of the population. Today, we are happy to say that, you know, in a few years, Nigeria, which is the most uh, populous uh, state in, uh, in Africa, will be competing with a nation like India in terms of the size of the population. To what extent the size of uh, the population becomes uh, a, an element, uh, a crucial element, you know, uh, uh, that can weigh in the economy if we want to make that uh, connection in India. Geopolitics is also about army. If uh, my uh, brother Elijah talks about, you know, what colonization, we all know that, you know, what colonization was not done uh, by uh, just uh, sitting around the table and then signing treaty with uh, the African population. No. Matter of fact, uh, Siri Lionel James tell us that, you know, what the only place in the world where colonization was uh, done peacefully was in the books that are written by the colonizers themselves. It means that, you know, what weapons were utilized until today. As we talk about this, a major geopolitical, you know, uh, influences. Uh, maybe you want to uh, close. Yes, uh, the uh, geopolitical influences in the world uh, today, and we talk about these superpowers, Clarice. We do understand that they are not superpowers simply because that they have large economy. But in addition to that, they are also nuclear weapon holders. Therefore, superpowers uh, uh, armies in there. So when we look, therefore, at uh, at the geopolitics, Clarice, we also wanted to look at immigration. Professor, uh, 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 not Professor, but you know, my brother Elijah mentioned something that I want to build on is a colonization. What did colonization do? Colonization created some. Uh, uh, in numbers of uh, states uh, today. And those states have become also element of geopolitics uh, uh, in India. Therefore, as we look at all of those things, to what extent, you know, uh, the natural resources that, you know, where the continent has, their uh, beauty and uh, their uh, 
uh, vast amount of lanes that we have are the things that you know were attracted the European colonizers way back, you know, at the end of the, uh, I mean, the middle of the 19th century, for instance. And what did we see? The partitioning of the land, not just for the sake of partitioning the land, but for the sake of controlling, number one, the people, number two, the uh, natural resources, and number three, introducing some cultures that today determine the African economy. At the end of colonization, what happened? What happened is that Africa became the uh, supplier of raw materials for the uh, uh, European industries uh, in the world. It started the way back, you know, during the time of slavery. African people were taken from the continent to become a material that were sold either in England, in Europe, or in North America. In, the, in return, we have what? Uh, a sugar that was taken from the America in direction to uh, Europe and vice versa. How did we enter in in there again? And how till today, uh, uh, what is the book? Walter Rodney tells us uh, in his uh, famous you know, uh, book, how slavery underdeveloped the African continent. So there is this connection in in there. Africa's, you know, uh, 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 geopolitical, you know, uh, strength in terms of uh, the uh, diversity of its cultures, in terms of the power of what people call the melanin, has determined also how the continent became so attractive for people from all over the world, from North America, Europe first, and North America, and uh, continuing uh, 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 today. I want to talk very quickly about some of those things. Maybe, Clarice, we want to leave aside for now the natural resources, but let's talk about cocoa and coffee. These are products, again, that were introduced in Africa, geopolitical purposes, because colonization was a geopolitical competition at the time when Europe, according to Adubo Ahen and all of the historians, uh, Ali Mazrui and all of them, when Europe was competing for grandeur. But that grandeur included, number one, the possessions that you have outside of Europe, but also what those possessions are bringing to you, to your economy. The establishment of currencies, the interest of the African countries into the uh, what we call today, what we have today as uh, the... Um, present day, I don't want to use the modern, but that would be confusing, but the present day currency system that we have, the colonies of uh, uh, the French sphere entered into the French CFA. By the way, it was a way of introducing us in there. What is the connection between this and the state of our economies today? Have we been able since the 1960s at least to break that kind and regain possession of our geopolitical you know, realities? To what extent today? Right? The cocoa production, people should know, Cote d'Ivoire and Ghana by themselves, you know, will produce 40% of the cocoa beans, you know, in the world annually. But guess what? When it comes to Cote d'Ivoire and even Ghana, it is only 6% of the year cocoa revenues that goes to the farmers, the main producers, out of $1 billion that, you know, what this yields annually. So here are the realities. Yes, there is a clear connection between this geopolitics that we define, which is not just the natural resources, which is not just a competition between the European powers or the superpowers, but which is also the ways in which the African leadership. And that's where uh, Brother Elijah is right. To what extent our leadership, our decision makers, our policy makers have been able to make us take advantage of all of these realities that we have, whether it is the geography, whether it is the geography, human geography, or physical geography. Who is exploiting our natural resources? Who is exploiting our rivers? Who is producing electricity for us? Who is uh, making decisions about how people can cross the different borders that we have, which we all know are porous borders, easier for goods to go from one country to another, but very difficult for people to crisscross. To what extent it is difficult to travel from Nigeria to Cameroon today 
also elements of geopolitics. Because once goods are not able to uh, 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 transfer back and forth between the two countries, between Nigeria and Benin, between Cote d'Ivoire and Ghana, between Cameroon and uh, uh, Nigeria, fighting over the Bakasi Island at some time, you know, uh, back uh, in history, all of those things again bring us to the question of how African policymakers are actually leading the continent to take advantage. One final point is uh, we talk about the African Continental Free Trade Agreement. Why is this a powerful thing that is coming up and that should come up? And if well managed, will be to the advantage because if done, it will be the largest common market in the world with all of these millions of people that exist in Africa. Again, this is an indication of geopolitics that the African continent should take advantage of. So in resting on that first question, what I wanted to do was to give our viewers a clear understanding of what we call geopolitics, and then African countries have their own geopolitics as well.